Every nation has a flag, and every company has its logo. So too, the Society of Jesus. Their logo bears the first three letters of Jesus' name in Greek. Over the years, it will be crafted simply or intricately in various designs and in various materials. It is found in every Jesuit house and school and is inscribed on many Jesuit publications as a reminder of the origins and purpose of the Society of Jesus. For the good of souls in the name of Jesus. The life of Ignatius Loyola gives us an insight into the identity and vision of the religious order he founded. Ignatius was THE Jesuit, and the Jesuits are Ignatius. Jerome Nadal, one of the early companions, in explaining what the Society of Jesus is, refers to the life of Ignatius saying, it is a living example of our way of proceeding. Born in 1491, the youngest of 13 children, Ignatius was destined for a life as a courtier with a basic education to go with it. Ignatius had dreams of military glory. He was a ladies' man filled with vanity and egoism. Speaking of himself in his autobiography, Ignatius says, Until the age of 26, he was a man given up to the vanities of the world, and his chief delight used to be in the exercise of arms, with a great and vain desire to gain honor. In other words, he liked to sword fight and win. After joining the Spanish army, he was seriously wounded while fighting in Pamplona against the French. His dreams of a military career and fame were as shattered as his legs. During his long recovery, his only distractions were two books at Castle Loyola, The Lives of the Saints and The Life of Christ. Over time, and with some reluctance, he began to read them. In contrast with his long daydreams, about pleasing a fair damsel with his knightly exploits, he found himself deeply attracted to the service of others in imitation of Jesus and the saints. The names that he used to describe the emptiness he experienced from his daydreams and the enthusiasm he experienced in joining Christ the King were desolation and consolation, respectively. These words were to become very influential in his decision-making processes throughout his life. During his religious conversion, Ignatius impulsively decided to become like the saints he read about who served the King Christ. He was determined to not only imitate the saints, but to be better than they were. He was on a mission. His focus on service had changed, but not his arrogance. That would take some time. In medieval fashion, he journeyed to the Benedictine Monastery of Montserrat in the Sawtooth Mountains outside Barcelona to dedicate his life to the lady in the castle, Mary, the mother of Jesus. His dream was to go to the Holy Land and convert Muslims, a dream he held for many years and a dream which would never be fulfilled. He made his way down from Montserrat to the small village of Manresa to discern where God was leading him. He lived in a cave by the Cardinaire River. Never one for half measures, he threw himself into extended periods of prayer and penance as well as service of others, caring for the sick, visiting prisoners, and counseling other people. He experienced deep consolation and even mystical visions, but he also suffered periods of severe doubt and depression, shame and guilt over his past life, and was tempted several times to suicide because he did not feel that he was good enough. One afternoon at the Cardinaire River, near his cave home, Ignatius had a profound yet mysterious experience which eventually led to his spiritual conversion. He realized for the first time that God loved him as he was at that very moment and not for what he could become tomorrow. This loving revelation changed his life's direction forever. In the process, his vanity was further purified and his attraction to service became even stronger. He recorded his experiences in a spiritual diary which became his roadmap 
for directing others through similar conversion experiences. This diary came to be called The Spiritual Exercises. Since going to the Holy Land was out for now, he decided that the kind of service to which God was calling him could best be approached by becoming a priest. So he enrolled in the University of Paris, where, over time, he befriended six or seven fellow students for whom he became a spiritual director. He eventually guided all of them through the experience of the spiritual exercises. Upon graduating from the university, Ignatius and his companions undertook a discernment for their future. Instead of going their separate ways, they concluded that God desired them to band together and serve others in companionship. They gained the approval of the Pope to become a religious order called, in English, the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. They grew to become the largest religious order in the Catholic Church. For over 470 years, their numbers grew until the end of the 20th century, when the numbers of active Jesuits began to decline. More and more lay people were taking over positions of authority in schools and universities, usually reserved for Jesuits. In the 90s, the Society gathered representatives together for General Congregation 34, which discussed the transition of the responsibility of promoting Ignatian identity to the laity.